Hello and welcome to this instructional guide on how to make screencasts using Flashback Pro. Flashback can be thought of as essentially two different softwares. One is used to edit your screencast and the other is used to record it. So we're going to use the recording software first. Before we start recording, we first want to make sure that our frame rate settings are correct. To do this, we're going to go to settings navigate down to record mode slash performance and ensure our frames per second is set to 24. If the frames are less, your video will look quite jumpy and a bit jarring. Click OK and then we select if we want the screencast to record the sounds of our microphone, record the sounds of our PC. If you were using YouTube videos or anything like that in your screencast, you'd make sure that that was selected and also the webcam tick if you want the video of your webcam to appear in the bottom corner, you'd select the webcam. And finally, hit record. Now you're asked which screen you would like to record. In this case, I have a laptop and a secondary monitor, and so I can choose either or both of those. Hit record, three, two, one, and now your screen is recording. To stop the screen, you can click the red box or press Control Shift S on your keyboard. Now we're going to have a look at how you can point at stuff on screen, how you can highlight certain zones, how you can highlight everything except certain zones, and how you can zoom into certain areas. So to start with, I'm just going to tidy up the start and end of my video. As you can see, I'm editing a screencast of a PowerPoint presentation. So I want to find the point where I want the screencast to start here and I'm going to make a selection the whole way back to the start of the video and delete all of that. So once it's selected, press delete. OK. And now my video starts where I want it to start. I'm going to repeat this exact same process for the end of the video. Your audience doesn't need to see you clicking in and clicking out of PowerPoint. Now the video is the length we want, we can start to add annotations. I'm going to click annotations and you simply drag your selected annotation wherever you like on the screen. You'll notice on the timeline it appears as a green event and you can then adjust the start and end time of that event. Every time we add a new annotation, you'll see the timeline updates. You can have multiple simultaneous annotations. You can adjust the start and end times of each so that they can appear how you like. To add a highlight, we we'll click the Add tab, hit Highlight, and then simply decide, do you want to highlight an area or would you like to highlight everything but an area? That's the difference between interior and exterior highlight. And then you also have some basic color changes of how you want the spotlight to appear. Note that this appears as a yellow event on the timeline. To zoom into a certain area, I'm going to click the zoom tool and you'll notice a green square appears on the screen. This is where you want the screen to zoom to. So in this case, I want it to zoom here. So I'm going to shape it and position it there and click apply you'll notice the blue zoom event appears on the timeline. You can adjust the end and start points of this the same as all the other events. Next, if you want to record an overdub, hit the sound tab and record sound. You can then press record and record your message. One, two, three, four. Each time you record a new sound, a new audio track will appear at the bottom of your timeline. And finally, we want to export our video. MP4 is probably the most versatile format, but you have options. And a few things we want to make sure it's the whole movie. We want to make sure the frame rate is set to full and also that the sound and video quality are set to high. And once you click export, choose somewhere for it to save and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this brief flashback video and we'll see you in the next one.